Hello and welcome to this week's special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Ochsner. Thanks for joining us. This week, we're taking a look back at some of our favorite stories from New Holland Agriculture. Let's get out into the field. For many cow-calf producers, getting their herd through times when forage is in short supply requires adequate supplies of good quality hay. One key to ensuring your operation has all the hay it needs is making sure your hay tools and baling equipment are in tip-top condition before you head to the field. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brian Baxter headed to eastern Pennsylvania to visit with some of the experts about the value of baler tune-ups. Lancaster County, Pennsylvania is home to some of the most diverse farms in the nation. Earl Zimmerman grows a wide variety of crops and feeds 70 head of cattle for beef. And he spends a lot of time with his round baler putting up corn stalks and other crops for himself and his neighbors. We have the baling for our three farms and then we do some custom baling in the side for 20 some years now that I own a round baler. Most of my baling probably runs from September through December for a lot of corn stalks. And so in the spring we do bale age, summer it's some dry hay and straw. I use all mesh wrap, I use no twine. New Holland has one of the best setups to put mesh wrap on in their bales that's out there that you can find for simple and working. One of the highlights of a New Holland. And they make nice, consistent, dense bales too. Because he relies so much on his New Holland baler, Earl works with Bob Kasmer from his local New Holland dealer when he needs a little help to make sure the baler is ready to go. If you don't do good prep, uh, pre-season prep, you have the uh, chance of the baler failing on you prematurely and causing you major downtime. To get the baler ready for season, uh, it's best to do a walk around, look for any items that might be worn or broken or fatigued and replace those as necessary. You know you got a good days of baling coming. Uh, you get out there before you leave and you go over your baler. Grease it, check the chain tensions, clean the dirt out, get it ready, that you can go out there and have a successful day. All livestock producers uh, should pay attention to these tips. Um, it can reduce the cost of ownership no matter what color the paint is and uh, no matter the vintage of the baler, proper maintenance uh, always pays. The list of to-do items in a thorough round baler checkup is fairly long, and some are easily forgotten. So we asked New Holland's Kurt Hoffman to hit some of the high points. The most common service uh, item that I've seen that folks fail to do would be burnishing the slip clutches on the baler. Uh, many folks will lubricate chains with oil, they'll grease the baler, but they'll forget the clutches, and clutches will draw moisture over time, no matter whether they're kept outside or in the barn, and they stick together, no matter what the paint color is on the baler, and uh, it can have a myriad of uh, negative impacts on the baler, as well as the tractor, because uh, we do have a clutch pack in the transmission that's driving the baler, and uh, puts undue stress on that clutch pack, as well as the drive lines of the baler. One of the other forgotten things is uh, PTO maintenance and it may not be totally entirely forgotten, but is it done properly? The drive line in front of me is a 50-hour drive line, and the, the casing has been stamped so that when you line up the grease zerks up at the top, you also have lined up all the zerks down at the front yoke. So each one of these zerks should be greased with about three to four pumps of grease each, but there's one exception to that, and that's the centralizing disc up at the front. Greasing the centralizing discs is uh, very important because if we, we do not put an adequate amount of grease in the centralizers, that's a $1,500 bill on average for e each producer. And no matter what color the baler's painted, uh, it's a, uh, an extremely expensive lesson. So 30 pumps to 35 pumps in the centralizer protects you from a $1,500 bill. And of course, it won't break when it's in the barn. It'll break when it's in the field. When getting your round baler ready for a busy haying season, Kurt Hoffman says it's important to check and adjust all the items that create thorough pickup of the crop. Another preseason check uh, to save you money is your pickup tines. Of course, we're looking for broken tines, missing tines from last season. We want to replace those. 
But the other item to check is take your gauge wheels on the end of the pickup and adjust them to give you one inch minimum clearance between the ground and the tip of the tine. Preferable uh, to run the tines higher than that if you're in a stubble crop like wheat because if we can get them away from the ground there's less chance of picking up rocks or hitting uh, woodchuck holes and things of that nature that can cause damage to the pickup tines. Another key adjustment is setting the gap between your wind guard roller and the tines, ensuring there's at least a one to one and a half inch gap to allow crop to pass through unrestricted. So if the roller wind guard sits too tight or too far away from the tip of the tines, how we adjust it properly is loosen this nut and either put the bolt in the upper hole for more gap or put the bolt in the lower hole for less gap, tighten the nut back down. That'll ensure that you have uniform crop flow to the pickup. Another missed adjustment when it comes to enhancing your baler's performance is pickup flotation. It's also a costly missed adjustment because it can lead to bent bands, broken tines, things of that nature because the pickup is pressed too tightly against the ground. So how we check this is we grab a hold of the pickup gauge wheel and pick up should be able to pick it up and down with about 80 to 90 pounds of force in general. Operators that go faster want more force against the ground. Operators that go slower can run less force against the ground. Another item that's often missed is chain tension. At the end of season, we back it in the barn, park it, and never look at chain tension. On a New Holland baler, it's easy to tell whether you have the proper chain tension. If you take a look at the spring idlers, uh, most of them have a piece of spring steel laid right against the spring and you check the chain tension by making sure that the flat washer is uniformly even with the side of the spring gauge. That way I get maximum life out of the chain. Another adjustment to the pickup is downward travel and how we limit downward travel is a check chain. And what we want to do basically is adjust the check chain to allow about six inches of downward travel should I go over a depression in the field, I don't want to miss the crop. So by lifting the chain in the keyhole slot, you can adjust the chain so that it's equal on both sides for, of the pickup. After adjusting the pickup uh, check chains, the thing that's most important is running the tractor remote in float. After all, if you run the remote in neutral, it locks the oil up and doesn't allow that pickup to float down into the depression to grab the crop. So it's very key that you take and you use a remote that has a float position and allows the pickup to move up and down with the contours of the land. Of course, checking and setting the correct tire pressure on the baler is also essential, as is checking the condition of the belts. Another item to take a look at are your belts. They're the heart and soul of the baler. What we're looking for here, we're looking for nicks, we're looking for cuts, lacings that are starting to pull out of the belting, those kind of things that may give us downtime in season. So. The easy way to do this is to take the tractor and run it at an idle, stand back from the baler and, and watch the belts as they travel past for any of the above mentioned items. Also on the to-do list, checking your operator's manual to set the proper distance between the PTO and the hitch pin, loading the baler with twine or net, and setting the bale density to the desired pressure to produce a minimum bale density of 10 pounds per cubic feet for minimal crop loss when stored outside. To adjust bale density, we want to adjust the hydraulic density pressure using a valve, which is standard equipment on all New Holland balers. We loosen up the jam nut, and then we screw in the valve to our preset pressure. We're going to try and set this one to 1500 PSI. So with the help of my assistant who's in the cab of the tractor, he's going to cycle the tailgate up, and then I'm going to check my pressure to see if I have it at the right pressure. If I don't, I'll cycle the tailgate back down and either adjust the knob in or out to the desired pressure. And now that we have our pressure set to 1500 PSI, we don't want it to change, so what we're going to do is tighten the jam nut down on the valve. And now you're ready for season with your baler that was proudly built in New Holland, Pennsylvania. To do a good overall check on a round baler, it may take up to three hours, but it's a small investment of time that pays big dividends. Three hours could save you three days of downtime. Reporting from Eastern Pennsylvania, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen.
There's no substitute for being prepared, so you may want to visit your local New Holland dealer for smart tips to do a preseason tune-up on your round baler. And as always, you can find out more on our website. That's www.cattlemantocattlemen.org.